Got a little book too. I have a tag for you today. I was tagged by Mose Reads, and uh, uh, that sent me on a little binge watch of her. <laughs> you should all do the same thing because her channel is wonderful. Uh, it's the name book tag where you simply associate an author with each letter of your name. Uh, and the first one is S, and you might be thinking that I would pick Shakespeare or Suetonius, uh, but no, <laughs> no. Uh, I want to pick a contemporary person, Elif Shafak, the Turkish author who wrote The Bastard of Istanbul and most recently The Architect's Apprentice. Wonderful, fantastic novels. And, uh, and she is, she's a, an elegant crafter of prose. I, I highly recommend her work, uh, even though she's still alive. <laughs> uh, T would be Thurkle, Angela Thurkle. Uh, uh, now totally forgotten uh, mid-20th century. Admittedly minor uh, author of novels of manners that, uh, that deserve a second read. She, she may not hit the deepest, most resounding literary notes, but she never wrote a book that wasn't entertaining. She never wrote a book you'd put down, which is no small feat. Uh, uh, let's see here. E would, would be Eliot, George Eliot. The author of the second greatest 19th century novel of them all. <laughs> I know at least two people who are going to egg my house because of that. Uh, v would be Vespasiano. Vespasiano de Pistici. He's, a, he's a, an Italian Renaissance author who you've never heard of. And that is a crime. He wrote a book of lives of the illustrious men of his age. And they are great just great. I've never understood why, for instance, Vasari's Lives of the Artists is well known and reprinted and in gift editions and in Penguin Classics and whatnot, but Vespasiano is not. I've never understood that. There's no edition of his book. Penguin doesn't do it. Bantam doesn't do it. There's no scholarly edition currently in print in America. It's disgraceful. Uh, so he gets my vote for V. Uh, and if you ever come across once upon a time a long time like 40 or 50 years ago there was a paperback in america i think by torch if you ever come across it and you're at least you're a little bit historically inclined get it you'll be very happy you did uh another e would in this case be emerson ralph waldo <laughs> uh who i can recommend for almost everything he's not remembered anymore for his poetry but only for mainly for his essays but everything he wrote was was really really good uh so, you know, Penguin, for instance, Penguin Classics, my beloved Penguin Classics, just, just recently did a big selected Emerson volume. Well worth your money. Uh, D is uh, Dante and the Divine Comedy especially. And what I would recommend for those of you who have no Italian, the Alan Mandelbaum translation, which is not only really good as a translation, but has incredible notes, which you really kind of need with a bookwormy author like Dante. He's forever making illusions that don't have any resonance anymore uh then o would be o'connor but which o'connor in this case flannery o'connor <laughs> the author of wise blood and a good man is hard to find and everything that rises must converge a, a truly fantastic uh american author that more americans should read uh, then n would be natsumi soseki the the japanese author who wrote many things uh, he wrote uh, I am a cat but we'll forgive him for that <laughs> he, wrote, he wrote The Gate and then there's his masterpiece in my opinion Kokoro uh, he's also a, a bit of a spotty case for reprints uh, it's, and that's a shame I'm not 100% sure for instance that uh, Penguin or Norton or anybody even does Soseki Kokoro, I'm not sure they even do Kokoro and I, most of the others I'm sure they are not in print in America uh, and that's a shame, <laughs> he's really good uh, didn't mean this to be a greatest hits of yesteryear uh, but sometimes that's the way the cookie crumbles uh, oh, of course, there can be only one uh, author uh, in this case, the lovely Penguin hardcover of Ovid's Metamorphoses, but I, I'll take anything by Ovid, all his stuff is wonderful even his his poems of complaint from exile are still beautiful. Uh, then G, we're gonna go a little bit nerdy here. Uh, 
I want to pick Gerald of Wales. <laughs> not, a, not a name that will be unknown to those of you who know me in real life. Uh, he was a he was born in the mid 12th century. He was a, a cleric and a best-selling author of his day. Uh, he's born in Wales. And he wrote two books about Wales uh, that were done as Penguin Classics. History and Topography of, of Ireland, which has a lot of Wales in it, and a journey through Wales and a description of Wales. Uh, that are full of storytelling. You wouldn't think from those dry titles that they would be, but they are. Uh, and the important thing is he wrote ever so much more than that. He wrote biographies and saints' lives and ethical tracts and histories, and they're all wonderful. He had such a wonderful command of Latin. And, and Penguin doesn't make these anymore, and they have never combined them into a, you know, Gerald of Wales goes on the road <laughs> it's travel writing and i've never done anything else as far as i know the entire corpus of his work has never been translated completely into english especially not in, an, in a you know an annotated scholarly version it's a crime in his day people traded horses for his books <laughs> he's now completely forgotten um, so he gets g <laughs> but h will not be a problem. He, H will not be part of the gone but forgotten <laughs> roster. It's Herodotus, uh, the 5th century BC historian whose book is just amazing, just a companion for the rest of your life, and who is regularly reprinted and constantly studied, so at least we have that. He's not forgotten. Uh, then you will be another uh, contemporary, Jenny Uglo, uh, uh, historian and biographer who's alive today <laughs> who did uh, she did a biography of uh, the aforementioned George Eliot she did a biography of Elizabeth Gaskell that was really good she did a fantastic biography of the artist Hogarth um, and she does histories too I don't think I've ever read anything by her that, that I've read everything that she's written I don't think I've read anything that, that I found serious fault with I, she's just amazing uh, she is a a regular occurrence on my epic end of the year Steve Reed's best books roundup <laughs> uh, and then the last book we have is one that I've mentioned on this channel a couple of times before but for E how could I not it has to be Erasmus in this case the praise of folly although in Erasmus case I could hit the same note I've hit throughout this tag that so much that he wrote that is gone now so much that's great that's gone Praise of Folly is still reprinted, and sometimes his familiar colloquies are still reprinted, but his religious handbook, Enchiridion, uh, his commentaries on the New Testament, oh god, his adages, his gigantic book of adages, by the end of his life it was selling better than any book in the history of printed books. In the history of books, really, in, uh, all of this stuff is gone, when all it would take show people why it was popular in the first place would be a very lively new translation from the Latin and a very good introduction. That's all. You'd have a book. It would be easy to position a, a mind as witty and ironic and sarcastic as Erasmus for consumption by the 21st century. That would be easy to do. It's not a hard transition, but no one's done it yet. <laughs> And that's bothersome. <laughs> uh, and there you go. That is the names tag. All that remains here is for me to tag people. And I have a little list here. I tag Bookerly, a channel that I just discovered and absolutely love. I tag Ben Sanders, because he has a name. <laughs> I tag Empty Ink Pots, uh, if he has the time or inclination to do tags. I tag Final Blow Joe. And I tag Dee Dee from Brown Girl Reading. I, I want to hear your named answers to all of these. Uh, and that's it for today. Thank you, BookTube.